The following stories are true. Listening discretion is advised. If you like these stories, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Here is the first story. The cavernous entrance of the cave yawned before the group of explorers, its darkness swallowing the feeble light of their headlamps. As they stepped cautiously into the subterranean world, a chilling silence settled over them. The echo of their footsteps reverberated through the narrow passageway, creating an eerie symphony of uncertainty. They had come to explore this remote cave, drawn by tales of its undiscovered beauty, but they were about to unearth something far more sinister. The team of seasoned cave explorers consisted of five individuals, each with their own unique expertise. There was Alex, the geologist, who sought to uncover the secrets of the cave's geological history. Sarah, the biologist, was fascinated by the possibility of discovering new species of underground life. Dave and Lisa were experienced spelunkers, known for their unyielding determination to conquer the most challenging of caves. And then there was Paul, the group's sound expert, who had a knack for detecting the faintest of sounds deep within the earth. As they ventured deeper into the cave, the atmosphere became increasingly oppressive. The passageway twisted and turned, creating an intricate labyrinth that defied logic. They encountered bizarre rock formations, some resembling monstrous faces that seemed to leer at them with malevolence. Yet, it was the unsettling sounds that began to gnaw at their nerves. At first, the noises were faint and easily dismissed as echoes of their own movements. But as they delved deeper, the sounds grew louder and more distinct. Footsteps, distant yet unmistakable, reverberated through the cavern. The explorers exchanged puzzled glances, their headlamps revealing a shared sense of unease. Paul, the sound expert, took out his audio recording equipment and held the microphone high, straining to capture the strange sounds. His equipment beeped, indicating that it was recording. The footsteps persisted, growing more rhythmic and deliberate, as if they were being produced by an unseen entity. What could be making those sounds? Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. Alex examined the cave walls, looking for signs of wildlife, but there was nothing to suggest any creature was responsible. Lisa and Dave, typically fearless in the face of the unknown, had begun to clutch their ropes as if seeking some reassurance from the lifeline that tethered them to the surface. The explorers pressed on, driven by their insatiable curiosity. The sound of footsteps guided them deeper into the cave's labyrinthine passages, growing louder and more unsettling with every step. They couldn't shake the feeling that they were not alone, that something or someone was lurking just out of sight. As they continued their descent, the sounds evolved. First came whispers, like an eerie choir of voices too faint to decipher. The explorers strained to understand the words, but they remained just beyond the realm of comprehension, a cacophony of secrets held by the earth. Paul adjusted his recording equipment, attempting to isolate and enhance the whispered voices. The whispers intensified, as if mocking their attempts to understand. They swirled around the explorers, enveloping them in a chilling embrace. Is this cave haunted? Lisa shivered, her words a desperate plea for a rational explanation. Dave, always the pragmatist, dismissed the notion. It's probably just the acoustics of this place, echoes playing tricks on our ears. But even Dave's voice was met with a curious phenomenon. As he spoke, his words were echoed back in a distorted, mocking chorus, filling the cave with a disconcerting cacophony. The explorers decided to pause, seeking a moment of respite from the relentless sounds that seemed to mock and taunt them. They huddled together, their breaths synchronized in the eerie silence that followed. In the quiet darkness, they realized that the sounds had changed once again. This time, it was a soft, melancholic hum, resonating through the cave like a mournful lullaby. The harmonious notes carried an undercurrent of sorrow, and the explorers found themselves inexplicably drawn to its source. They followed the haunting melody, their headlamps guiding them deeper into the heart of the cave. 
The path they walked was treacherous, but the allure of the music was irresistible. It was as if the cave itself was beckoning them forward, luring them into its depths. The hum grew louder, filling the cave with a haunting beauty that seemed out of place in the oppressive darkness. The explorers couldn't resist its pull, even as they understood the danger it presented. It was as if the cave was a siren, singing them closer to their own demise. As they descended further into the cave's depths, the tunnel widened, revealing a vast underground chamber. The source of the haunting melody became apparent as their headlamps illuminated an otherworldly sight. In the center of the chamber stood an enormous crystal, radiating an ethereal light. It pulsed with each melancholic note, casting eerie shadows on the cave walls. It was the source of the strange sounds that had guided them here. Sarah, the biologist, approached the crystal, her eyes filled with wonder. This is like nothing I've ever seen, she whispered, her voice trembling with awe. The explorers gathered around the crystal, unable to tear their eyes away from its mesmerizing glow. It seemed to hold the secrets of the cave, its beauty and mystique masking the true nature of the underground world. But as they watched, the crystal's light dimmed and the haunting melody faded into silence. In the sudden darkness, a sense of dread washed over them. The cave had lured them here, but for what purpose? Just as fear began to grip their hearts, they heard a new sound. It was the soft, deliberate sound of footsteps echoing through the chamber. The explorers turned toward the entrance of the cave, their headlamps revealing a chilling sight. Figures emerged from the shadows, their features obscured by tattered, cave-worn clothing. They moved with a slow and deliberate purpose, their footsteps echoing in the silence. The explorers realized with horror that they were not alone in the cave, and these figures had been here for a very long time. The group of explorers stood frozen, unable to comprehend the enigmatic beings that had emerged from the depths of the cave. These underground denizens regarded them with empty, hollow eyes, their expressions devoid of emotion. As the cave's strange residence encircled the explorers, Paul turned off his audio recording equipment, understanding that there were no ordinary sounds to be captured here. The haunting melody, the footsteps, the whispers, and the eerie echoes, all were the creations of these cave dwellers who had lured the explorers into their subterranean world. The explorers had encountered a civilization hidden deep within the earth, a civilization that had thrived in isolation for centuries. These underground inhabitants had used their enigmatic talents to create an illusion, drawing outsiders into their world. It was a world that was both wondrous and disturbing, where time had no meaning, and the line between reality and illusion had blurred. The explorers had been unwittingly initiated into this underground society, their fate now entwined with that of the cave dwellers. As the echoes of their footsteps continued to reverberate through the cavern, the explorers had no choice but to follow the mysterious figures further into the abyss, embracing the strange and terrifying reality of the underground world they had discovered. Here is the second story. Deep within the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, there lay an uncharted cave, a nameless chasm that had eluded explorers for centuries. The locals spoke of it only in hushed whispers, and tales of its foreboding darkness had kept the superstitious at bay. For those who dared venture inside, the journey was treacherous and unpredictable, but for a group of seasoned cave explorers, it was an irresistible challenge. The team of experienced spelunkers gathered at the mouth of the cave, their equipment meticulously checked, headlamps blazing like distant stars. Among them was Eleanor, a geologist whose curiosity had led her to this remote place, alongside Ben, the leader of the group, and Mark, an expert navigator. With backpacks loaded with supplies, they descended into the yawning abyss. At first, the descent was relatively smooth, as they moved deeper into the cave's labyrinthine passages. The stony walls dripped with moisture, 
creating a haunting echo with every step. The group's headlamps cast eerie shadows on the rocky floor, and the oppressive silence seemed to amplify their presence. As they delved deeper, the cave began to widen into a massive chamber, its ceiling so high it disappeared into inky blackness. The group marveled at the natural formations that adorned the walls, like sculptures, their minds lost in the beauty of the underground world. Their sense of wonder was short-lived. A low, rumbling noise echoed through the chamber, resonating in the bones of the explorers. At first, they dismissed it as nothing more than the sound of shifting rocks. But as they pressed forward, the noise grew louder, intensifying in a disconcerting crescendo. Eleanor's voice quivered as she asked, What is that sound? Is it the cave settling? Mark, the navigator, frowned and said, It shouldn't be. This cave has been here for millennia. It doesn't make sense for it to be settling now. The group continued, driven by a mix of fear and curiosity. The source of the sound remained elusive, an ethereal, ever-shifting noise that echoed through the cave's winding passages. It was as if the very earth beneath their feet had come alive, groaning and shifting in response to their presence. Ben, the group leader who had explored countless caves in his life, couldn't help but feel unease creep up his spine. Stay together, everyone, he said, his voice quivering only slightly. We need to keep moving. The exit is somewhere down here. Their headlamps illuminated grotesque rock formations that seemed to twist and writhe in the shifting light. The deeper they ventured, the more distorted and alien the landscape became. Every twist and turn of the cave's passageways only amplified the bizarre sounds that filled the air. Eleanor's hand trembled as she touched a peculiar, pulsating growth on the cave's wall. It felt cold and slimy, and she recoiled, wiping her hand on her pants. What is this place? She whispered, her voice quivering with terror. Mark shook his head, his normally confident demeanor faltering. I don't know, but we have to find a way out of here, and fast. With each passing moment, the strange sounds grew more disconcerting. The explorers began to lose track of time, their sense of reality warping in the distorted environment. They could no longer distinguish between their own footsteps and the unnerving noises that enveloped them. Suddenly, an agonizing shriek pierced the air, sending shockwaves of fear through the group. It was a primal, gut-wrenching sound that seemed to emanate from the very walls of the cave itself. Eleanor clamped her hands over her ears, unable to bear the wailing cacophony. The others were equally paralyzed, their hearts pounding in their chests. The source of the sound remained invisible, an otherworldly force that defied explanation. As the agonizing shrieks continued, the explorers knew they had no choice but to retreat. They turned and scrambled back through the winding passageways, their headlamps casting wild, erratic beams of light. The cave seemed to resist their escape, shifting and contorting in sinister ways, making the return journey an exhausting struggle. The alien sounds pursued them relentlessly, echoing off the walls as if the very cave itself were a malevolent entity, determined to keep them trapped in its nightmarish depths. They finally stumbled back into the massive chamber gasping for breath, their faces pale with terror. The rumbling sounds persisted, reverberating through the chamber with a relentless intensity. It was as if the cave was alive, a monstrous, breathing entity that held them in its clutches. Desperation drove the explorers to make a final push for the exit, their headlamps cutting through the eerie darkness. The cave seemed to grow angrier, its tortured cries growing more frenzied as they neared escape. With one final burst of strength, they reached the entrance and burst out into the blinding daylight. The moment they emerged from the cave, the deafening noise ceased and the world returned to its normalcy. The sun's warmth bathed them and the birds sang in the trees. They lay on the ground, gasping for air, their hearts racing, their minds scarred by the horrors they had witnessed deep within the nameless cave. As they caught their breath, Eleanor asked, 
What was that place? What could create such disturbing sounds and shapes? Ben could only shake his head, his voice barely a whisper. I don't know, and I don't want to know. That cave is not meant for us. We should never speak of it again. The group left the cave, vowing never to return, their experience haunting them for the rest of their lives. The nameless chasm remained, an enigmatic abyss that defied explanation, and a chilling reminder of the terrifying unknown that lurked beneath the surface of the earth. Here is the third story. Deep in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, there lies a network of caves, largely uncharted and untouched by humanity. These dark, winding tunnels are a treasure trove for the most intrepid of explorers, offering a descent into the unknown, where the world above becomes a distant memory. This is where our story unfolds, a tale of an expedition that would haunt the dreams of those who dared venture into the depths of the earth. The group of cave explorers, a diverse mix of experienced spelunkers, set out to explore the hidden abyss cave, a cavern that had never been fully mapped. As they descended deeper into the bowels of the earth, the world outside seemed to vanish, replaced by an oppressive silence broken only by the echoes of their footsteps and the soft dripping of water from the cave's ceiling. The journey began with excitement, but it soon turned into a descent into the unknown. The group consisted of five members. Rose, a fearless leader with a reputation for conquering the most challenging caves. Daniel, an experienced geologist who hoped to uncover the secrets hidden beneath the surface. Brielle and Tom, a couple of adventurers who had explored many caves together, and Jim, the group's techie, responsible for communication and navigation. Their path wound through narrow passages and expansive chambers, each more mesmerizing than the last. Stalactites hung like the teeth of a monstrous beast, while formations on the cave floor appeared like grotesque sculptures frozen in time. The geology of Hidden Abyss Cave was unlike anything they had seen before, with an otherworldly beauty that both fascinated and disturbed them. Hours turned into days as they explored further, their flashlights creating eerie patterns of shadows on the cave walls. The underground world was a maze of interconnected tunnels and chambers, and it was easy to lose their bearings. Yet, the explorers were confident in their abilities, trusting in their meticulously plotted maps and advanced technology to guide them. It was on the third day of their descent that they heard it, a strange muffled sound that seemed to emanate from the very heart of the cave. At first, they dismissed it as the echoes of their own voices, the cave playing tricks on their senses. But as they continued deeper into the abyss, the sound grew more distinct, resembling a low, rumbling hum that vibrated through the rock. Daniel, the geologist, was the first to notice the unusual resonance. He bent down to the cave floor, placing his ear against the cold, damp stone. Listen, he whispered to the others. There's something down there. As they listened intently, the sound grew louder and more disconcerting. It was as if the cave itself was breathing, a deep and ominous exhalation that seemed to come from the very core of the earth. The explorers exchanged nervous glances, their excitement giving way to unease. What is that? Rose asked, her voice tinged with concern. Jim, the techie, tried to contact their surface team through their radios, but the signals were weak and distorted, making communication impossible. They were truly on their own, deep within the heart of Hidden Abyss Cave. The sound persisted as they continued their descent, growing steadily louder and more unsettling. It began to reverberate in their bones, making them feel as if they were intruders in a realm beyond their understanding. The walls of the cave seemed to pulse with each eerie hum, and the explorer's flashlights flickered in rhythm with the sound, casting eerie shadows that danced on the walls. As they ventured further into the cave, the tunnels became narrower and more claustrophobic. The resonance grew louder, now resembling a guttural growl, and the walls seemed to close in on them. 
panic set in as they realized they were trapped in a living, breathing labyrinth that showed no mercy. Brielle and Tom, the adventurous couple, were the first to crack under the pressure. Their terrified whispers filled the cavern as they begged to turn back, their pleas fueled by the relentless sound that threatened to drive them mad. But Rose, determined to conquer the cave, insisted they press on, convinced that they were on the verge of making a groundbreaking discovery. Their journey continued, the strange sound haunting their every step. Time lost its meaning as they ventured deeper into the unknown, the cave seemingly endless. The explorer's flashlights began to flicker and die, leaving them in darkness punctuated only by the ominous growling of the cave. As the last of their light faded, they felt something shifting beneath them, a subtle rhythmic trembling in the ground. The sound reached its crescendo, an unbearable cacophony that threatened to shatter their sanity. Panic overcame them, and they scrambled back the way they had come, retracing their steps through the winding tunnels. But the cave was not ready to release its captives. The walls closed in on them, and the ground trembled violently. The sound intensified, becoming a deafening roar, and they felt a surge of hot, foul-smelling air rushing toward them. Desperation fueled their escape, and they pushed themselves to their limits. Brielle and Tom sobbed as they crawled through narrow passages, their bodies scraped and bruised. The deafening roar and the trembling of the cave pursued them relentlessly, a malevolent force from the bowels of the earth. After what felt like an eternity, they burst into an expansive chamber, gasping for breath. The sound finally began to recede, retreating into the depths of the cave. The explorers were battered and broken, their equipment destroyed and their spirits shattered. They had survived, but the horrors of the hidden abyss cave had left their mark. The experience had forever changed them, filling their dreams with the unsettling sounds and sensations of the underworld. They had ventured to the depths of the earth, and in doing so, they had come face to face with a darkness that defied understanding, leaving them with a sense of dread that would haunt them for the rest of their lives. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thank you for listening.